Hi there, uh, my name is Jeff Rhodes and uh, this video we're going to be talking about how to uh, disable a particular uh, element uh, in InfoPath and then we'll have a, a follow-on video that will show you how to do the same thing in the newer technology, Power Apps. So I started here just to tell you about my new book that's uh, coming out, Creating Business Applications with Office 365, Techniques in SharePoint, Power Apps, Power BI and more. So I'm hoping you'll come along for the journey. We'll be doing lots of videos. I encourage you to subscribe so that when you see there's new videos, you can check them out and we can learn many of these together. So here's the, the what the book looks like, some of the table of contents. Um, if I click on the uh, link, you can order it now on Amazon if you want. It says it's coming out in February, but you can pre-order it and it's already starting to kind of build up the list on the top SharePoint books. So excited about that. All right, let's get started. So let's go over to Office 365 and jump into SharePoint. And I'll just go to a particular site. We'll call it our Collaboration One. And what I want to do is I'm just going to add an app. So we'll assume we have a, a SharePoint list that we're going to keep track of some purchases. So I'm going to say Custom List. And since I'm going to do an InfoPath and a uh, and a Power Apps one, you see I practice with the InfoPath, so I'll create that. And first thing to notice is that this will be a default for our site, and that's the modern site. So notice see, I can customize this, but I can do it in Power Apps. So that'll be our next video. So let's deal with how we can do it in InfoPath uh, instead. So in case you're, you can do this in SharePoint 2013 if you don't have the Office 365 or you're just used to that technology and so forth. I have a separate uh, video that shows how to enable InfoPath on Office 365 if you want. So first thing we need to do is go to the advanced settings and change our list type. So we scroll all the way down here to list experience and we'll need to change it to the classic experience and that's what will allow it to go with InfoPath and then I've got a title column I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time making columns I'm sure you know how to do that but let's say we wanted an amount call it a number and we'll put the one we're really trying to do uh, is we'll say approved by accounting See, it remembered that because I've tried that before. And I'll say yes, no, and our value is no. So let's go and see how it looks. So by default, when you do new item, it'll just be a standard uh, SharePoint form, and we can anybody can check or uncheck that. And we could go in. Microsoft designer or SharePoint designer and <clears throat> put some JavaScript and so forth in there to disable it but that's a that's a lot of work a lot of stuff that can go wrong so instead of that we're gonna go into InfoPath so notice since I have the classic experience I have list and then I can say customize but watch what happens here it'll say oh we got to use Internet Explorer now I've experimented and I can do it in edge as well so I'll try to be a little bit newer so let me switch over I had that open already I'll paste in the URL and go into edge customize an info path and then now it'll work so if you uh, haven't gone into info path much you know these are our fields over here that we brought over from SharePoint and then I can do some logic so first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add a field and we're not going to put it on the form we're going to use it like a variable so we'll say is accounting user and I'll say it's a single line of text that's or actually I'll say it's yes no because they're going to be and it'll default to no so if I dragged it on here it would become a form but we're just going to use it that way in our rules Okay, and then I can go over to the data tab and I can say form load. 
And what I'm going to do is on the form load, I'm going to do a new action form. And I'm going to say, I'm going to set is accounting user. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a field's value. And the field I'm going to do is this new account is accounting user. And my value is, here's where the real power is. And so I'm going to insert a function. And I'll go to all functions. And I'm going to use contains. And notice it tells us what it does, the within text and the find text. So within will be what we're searching for. Uh, what's we're trying to search within in this case and what we're trying to looking for will be in the find so I'll say that and so what I'm gonna search in is oh actually I don't want to insert the field I want to insert I'm gonna delete that and insert a function so it's got a great function called username like that and if we looked at username what it would do is it has a bunch of stuff and then the email address. So it has like some pound symbols and IO and things like that. So what I'm looking for here is I'm just going to, first I'm just going to uh, test it with somebody who's not me. So I'll just call it George in here and uh, we'll see that it doesn't work. And you know why I'm, I'm at it, I may, uh, I'll build another form in here or maybe I'll, I'll to display so we can see what it does so we'll just say does the username contain George and uh, it is and so while we're, while we're doing that let me just put in a username just so we see what it looks like so we'll say username and in this case let me I'll insert a row I'll just throw that username over there like that and what I'm going to do is change that to a calculated field just so it doesn't look like we can do it in there we can type in it and then what I'll say here is I'll go to the calculated value oh, yeah I guess I have to do it over here I was kind of forget let's try that one there we go the default value so we'll insert our function there just so you can see what it looks like while we're testing so we'll see the username inside there so we can see what it looks like. All right, so let's finish off and then we'll do some testing. So we'll go to our approve by accounting and we still have the rules and we're gonna do a formatting rule. And we're gonna say disable if not accounting, like that. And when we do that, we'll disable this control. And then we use our condition and we can pick one of our fields is accounting user if it's equal to false then we'll uh, disable the controls so you kind of got to watch the double negatives a little bit because rather than saying whether it's enabled or not you're saying whether it's disabled or not so if it's accounting user is true then you want it enabled and if the accounting user is false then we want to disable it all right so we got that and let's try it so what we have to do is we have to publish it back to sharepoint and again since i put in there that it's george what i expect and i can go back to chrome here and reload and we say new item. There we go. And notice this is what I was talking about. Let me make it a little bigger. So see, that's what the, the username looks like. So it has this I colon, I mean, uh, yeah, colon O period, all this stuff. But this basically is the username or the email address of the user. Now notice Approved by accounting is disabled, so I can type in here some title, you know, for $5,000. If it had an attachment, I could save it, but I can't approve it. So let's just say, um, 
buy a new uh, video camera. So I can save it to our list, but I can't approve it. Now notice this is accounting user got added as my uh, to my column because I added it in there. Same with that username. So I'll probably disable that and we can hide this from the view and that kind of thing too. So, all right, let's go back and I think I still have InfoPath open, but I could opened it from there. So that shows you how the username, I'm gonna delete that. We don't need that anymore. Delete its associated column, that's fine, whoops. There we go. And we can go back to our form load and just edit this. So now that we see how that works, we'll say Jeffrey at Platte Canyon, and I don't really need the rest, but that will be enough. So let's try it. And what's nice is it, you know, I have to be logged on to Office 365 to get that. So it's really hard for somebody to spoof that and get the approval to put it. And we can do more elaborate things. I cover in the book where you have a, share, a separate SharePoint list with all the users. And if it's anybody in that user, and that's much easier because your, your average user won't be able to have the skills and we don't really want them to go into InfoPath and try to do this, this uh, uh, formatting and, and coding. But we can tell them, here's a list of, of users that you have rights to, you just keep it updated. So we'll do that in a separate video. But uh, this should get us going. Let's quick publish. And really all we're looking for now is that that box, now that it's me, I'm an accounting user, this should be enabled now instead of disabled. So let's go back. We maybe even can edit this one. There you go, see? I can edit it. So we get some nice uh, functionality that we want that certain things are editable and certain things aren't and locked down. And I've done lots of info path where we have sections, you know, it goes to different people, the accounting and then personnel and whoever else. And then all of the areas in that particular one are, uh, you know, only enabled for those users. And the other thing we can do on those lists is then we can email to those users. And so you can set up that the, I have a whole chapter in the, in the book where you have another column in that list and it says, do they want email notifications and use SharePoint designer and a workflow to do that. So we'll do some videos on that later, but uh, this should get us going for now. I hope this was helpful.